Hello friends. The topic many people like to talk about are the topics of divas, but we're usually just talking about pop divas nowadays. But I don't think they can hold a candle to the great opera divas of the past. And I'm going to talk about two that are very interesting and unlike anything that you would find from the pop diva behavior that you would see today. One was a 19th century diva and the other was one from the 30s to the 1950s. And they're very, very different, but unlike anything found today and very individual. The first was Adelina Patti, who was of Italian heritage. Um, she ended up being one of the greatest sopranos of the 19th century, and she was a favorite of Verdi. She never threw diva fits, but she always got her way, and inevitably the way involved money. She even had a parrot in her apartment, and whenever the opera promoter came to her place, it would say, cash, cash. She would expect $150,000 in today's money in gold, delivered 12 hours before she would ever consider going and singing in a concert. She did a U.S. tour of for three months and she expected $3 million in advance. Her um, promoter said that, well, that's more than the president pays. And she said, well, ask the president to sing. At one time, she was famous for appearing in concert wearing $3,700 diamonds, which would be worth today $20 million. That out divas any diva of the past hundred years. She was recorded at using the very primitive recording techniques the very begin with the very beginning of the 20th century when she was already retired basically from the stage and she was 63 when this began and she threw a little diva moment there because she wouldn't go to the studio they had to bring the studio equipment to her house and after she heard herself she said oh my lord now i understand why i am potty Oh yes, what a voice, what an artist. I understand everything. Now I'm gonna move on to Signani and I'm gonna do something somewhat unusual for me. I was first attracted to doing this speech because I read this book, The Last Prima Donna, and I read an interview that was done with Signani and she just leapt out at me across the page. And so I'm going to attempt some sort of characterization of what my impression is of Stignani. Don't expect it to be perfect. But I hope I am able to communicate some of the amazing color in what she says and how just unlike anything that you would find today, this interview is. Now, I can give you the facts of my career, but there is nothing colorful about me. As a matter of fact, the only color I possess is in my voice, la voce. It has always been my throat, which has been my passport. I am not an interesting woman in any way. I was given a magnificent gift, and in a way, I am like a priestess, for I feel it is my responsibility to keep this flame lit in the best possible manner. I am a Stignani because of my voice, La Voce. I often wonder who would have, I would have been otherwise. One does not conquer jealousy. One is just simply born without it. And I was among those blessed mortals. I have always been happy for the success of my colleagues. And anyhow, quite frankly, during all these years, all modesty aside, there really has been no competition in the wing, so to speak. There have been some great mezzos, yes, but none have been blessed with my particular voice. Now I'm going to play a couple of excerpts, a little longer than I normally do, 
of Stignani because she's so magnificent. Many people consider her the greatest mezzo-soprano of all time. The mezzo was a soprano whose voice is not quite as high as the typical soprano. She had a very large, dark, luscious sound, and she was famous for her expressiveness and flexibility. It was unusual to have such a big voice. It, it was considered one of the largest voices of all time. It was just truly massive. She was called the Italian Flagstad, if some of you remember my speeches about Flagstad. She had a lot of flexibility for such a big voice, and she also had rich low notes with, that were seamlessly connected up to a powerful dramatic soprano high C. She was not a great physical actress, but she was a very riveting vocal actress. I'm playing two excerpts of her. The first is one of the most beautiful arias of all time. It's when Delilah from the Bible is trying to seduce Samson in Sam Sesson's opera. And the second is the gypsy Azucena in Il Trovatore. And the story is a very convoluted, but it's very dramatic. And in this, she's recounting the fact that she was going to avenge her mother's death by a prince, and she was going to uh, throw his son, the, the baby prince, into the fire. And after she threw this live baby into the fire, she looked across and she saw that baby was still there. She had thrown her own baby into the fire. And she's going to say, Il figlio mio, il figlio mio. It was my baby. <laughs> and it is blood curdling what she does. She had a gloriously gorgeous voice, but she was willing to make her voice ugly in order to bring alive the acting parts of the scene. So see what you think. 